I think the werewoods are connected, each one a fragment of a greater whole. We know that they can communicate with each other, transfer information from one place to another instantly. How would they do this if they were not all connected? In South Central Utah, USA, exists a wonder of nature. Pando, also known as the Trembling Giant. Pando is Latin for, I spread out. What is Pando, you ask? Well, Pando was once thought to be a normal forest, until we discovered through genetic testing that every tree in the colony was actually a part of a single organism. Each so-called individual, genetically identical to the next, connected by a vast underground network of roots. I've said before that I believe that the werewoods are the same, each one connected to the next by a root system deep beneath the earth, stretched throughout the entirety of the continent of Westeros. You may have heard of Ig the Demon Tree, the legendary white tree who fed upon human flesh spoken of in Ironborn legends. According to the Ironborn, the Grey King had created the first ever longship from the wood of Ig. Some say the legend sprung out of the dark tradition of the first men to hang the entrails of those they defeated within the branches of the werewoods. But you've probably all heard the story of Ig before. But are you familiar with the myth of Yggdrasil? In Norse mythology, Yggdrasil was a giant tree connecting the nine worlds. According to mythology, the gods visited the world tree daily. Its roots extended far off into other locations. There were also beings said to inhabit Yggdrasil. The dragon, Nidhag, who gnawed upon the roots of the world tree. A hawk named Vedrofner, who sits between the eyes of an unnamed eagle. And four stags, each representing one of the four seasons, summer, winter, fall, spring. I know that I hung on a windy tree, nine long nights, wounded with a spear, dedicated to Odin, myself to myself, on that tree of which no man knows from where its roots run. The similarity between the name Ig and Yggdrasil is obvious, but what does it mean? Well, George R. R. Martin is a fan of history and mythology from various times and places throughout the world. Much of it he incorporates into his A Song of Ice and Fire book series. From Irish mythology, aka the She and the Milesians being the blueprint for the conflict between the Children of the Forest and the First Men, to the Night's Queen being Martin's version of Lilith from Hebrew mythology. To understand the connection between Ig and Yggdrasil, we have to go back to Pando. One thing that I didn't tell you about this superorganism is that it is actually dying, and no one knows exactly why. Pando was here long before we existed. Some scientists say it could be as old as a million years. And now it's dying. Here's a thought. What if the werewoods are dying? What if the Ironborn legend is hogwash, and Ig wasn't turned into the first ever longship? What if Ig is still standing? And what if the gods are still visiting? At the seat of House Blackwood in the Vale, there is a dying werewood of immense size. The Blackwoods claim that the great tree had been poisoned by their enemies, House Bracken, but who knows why the tree is actually in the condition that it is. What is known, however, is that even before the tree began to die, those many years prior to the start of our story, the ravens had come. Hundreds of ravens every evening visited the tree. It had been this way for thousands of years, the gods making their daily trek to Yggdrasil. And yes, of course the ravens are gods. The Northmen prayed to the werewoods, but we have seen firsthand that there are no gods listening. There are only the children of the forest and those who sit their green seer thrones and see through the eyes of the ravens. The connection between ravens and the children runs deep. According to Blood Raven, each of his ravens contains a soul of a long dead child of the forest. The ravens spoke the language of the children, and it was they who gave men the knowledge of how to send messages through the ravens. So, is the dying of the werewood at Raven Tree Hall an analog for the world tree Yggdrasil? If we said yes, 
then this has several ominous implications. If Raventree is Ig, this seems pretty indicative that there was likely some huge blood sacrifice that took place there. Otherwise, why would Ig the Demon Tree have such a bad reputation? Blood magic seems to be common amongst the children of the forest, and everything in the series so far has indicated that blood is a potent magical source. But more importantly, if Raven Tree is an analog for Yggdrasil, and if Raven Tree, like the real life Pando Forest, is dying, then what does that mean for Westeros? Essentially, their own world tree is dying. Raven Tree only took on its sickly appearance somewhat recently, but that does not mean that the Weirwood Net wasn't sick beforehand. Maybe the sickness goes back further than we think, and Raven Tree is only a sign of a much deeper condition. And perhaps this is all directly tied to what's happening in their world at this very moment. The Weirwood Net is infected. Martin's version of Yggdrasil is dying. As I said before, in Norse mythology, the World Tree is inhabited by the four stags who represent the four seasons. What is the biggest indicator that something is off in the A Song of Ice and Fire world? The unbalanced seasons. I think the Werewoods have a far deeper connection, fundamentally to the nature of their world, than anyone realizes. When the Werewood Net dies, the world dies. Or perhaps the world as they know it. Something happened thousands of years ago that was the catalyst for this. Something infected the Weirwood Net, probably whatever power awoke the others. But the children must have allowed it in. I have gone into detail before about how I believe the others were initially created by the children in order to destroy mankind. But there was a price, an ultimate price. Even when the children saw the error of their ways and helped mankind in containing the threat of that dark, cold force, Something still remained, trapped or unwilling to leave, slowly poisoning the Weirwood Net, and in turn, altering nature itself. Raven Tree itself doesn't literally have to be Martin's Yggdrasil. The Weirwood Net as a whole might symbolize it. I believe we are witnessing the final struggle for dominance of nature, the Weirwood Net will either be cleansed or fully corrupted, the river of time frozen eternally in darkness. The children and the Weirwoods have always been deeply connected. We assumed that it was because they could preserve their consciousness within the trees after death, but perhaps there is more to it. The Weirwood Net is an organism, one which I argued before could even be sentient. The Weirwood could be a Weirwood and understand the events that are unfolding around it, maybe even influence them. The roots of the Weirwoods run through Westeros like veins through a body. If the Weirwood is sentient, then Westeros is sentient. Westeros is a living continent. It is all connected. When Veramir dies beneath the Weirwood, he doesn't just become the Weirwood, he becomes all of Westeros, the Weirwood Net is Yggdrasil. Westeros is the world supported by it. Altering the Weirwood Net in any way would affect Westeros. It was altering the net that threw off the seasons long ago. The four seasons inhabit Yggdrasil. It is the reason the North is perpetually frozen and the seasons can last for years with no rhyme or reason. It all goes back to the Weirwood Net and its deep connections to the physical and metaphysical structures and forces in Westeros. If the Weirwood Net dies, Westeros may die or be changed in ways which we could never predict.